So in this video, I'm going to focus on just one type of the structures that we uh, license uh, to sell fireworks out of, and that's going to be permanent structures. So as you can see on the screen, there are three specific types of permanent structures, which uh, include a store, a facility, and then storage. Um, the definition of permanent is any type of building or structure that's actually affixed to a foundation or um, on a specific site. So the first type of permanent structure that I'll mention is a store. Uh, these are your retail or mercantile occupancies uh, that operate generally throughout the year, um, not just during fireworks season. Uh, these uh, store classifications are granted to facilities or sites that um, don't don't sell a large quantity of fireworks. In fact, um, one of the provisions to be considered a store uh, uh, says that no more than 25% of that retail area uh, can be used to sell fireworks and a maximum of uh, 600 square feet. Uh, a couple of things that make selling in a store difficult um, is that all the fireworks being sold have to be uh, packaged they have to be displayed in a manner that uh, any type of fireworks, if they were to get uh, ignited, wouldn't wouldn't shoot across the store. And the real difficult uh, code section to get by to have the store classification is that any type of aerial or audible ground devices, uh, I would typically consider just first class fireworks in general, uh, need to be uh, sold from behind a counter. Um, and so it, kind of in a similar manner that uh, guns are sold uh, in stores. So they can't just be on the open retail floor. Um, there is one other provision that uh, the fireworks need to be under supervision. We do allow for uh, cameras to be used as supervision or just staff to be uh, walking around the floor, you know, working on the floor. That's considered supervision as well. Um, so typically what we see with permanent stores is a limited quantity license. Many of these are already sprinklered, so that allows uh, sellers to have a thousand pounds of product on the floor. The other type of permanent structure is called a permanent facility. Now these are your brick and mortar stores that uh, are a building that typically remains throughout the year as well. It's not something that just pops up during the season and is taken down. Um, but its primary purpose is to sell fireworks. And so the definition that we actually have for a permanent facility is a building that does not meet the definition of a store. And so if you go back um, to the slide before, you just rewind a bit, and see that list of criteria that you have to meet in order to be considered a store, if any one of those points can't be met, uh, your, your site is considered a permanent facility. So this is associated with the highest licensing fees, which is $1,000, and it does require the strictest separation. Um, uh, there aren't any exceptions uh, in the code for permanent facilities. Whereas when you have temporary structures, whether it's a stand or a uh, uh, tent, you do get some type of except exceptions or uh, le more lenient provisions for separation distances. So these structures don't have that. There's always required um, three exits, which, which amounts to three directions of travel. Uh, always have to have emergency lighting and exit signage. Um, illuminated exit signage, and that's regardless of whether you're operating at night or not. Um, all the requirements of the means of egress need to be met. And then these are the really difficult ones, which buildings that have uh, 3,000 square feet or more uh, have to have a, a fire alarm. It's a public notification system that's compliant with NFPA 72. Um, and then buildings that are 6,000 square feet or more have to have a sprinkler system, uh, which is compliant with NFPA 13. So here is just a typical uh, example. This is what we have on our website. 
And the one thing that I wanted to point out is that it does require a one-hour fire separation distance when the building is located within 60 feet uh, of another building or structure. And so you can see that it's just indicated here on the plan that there's a one-hour separation. And now to blow up this actual floor plan, uh, to take a look at what I'm actually asking you to provide me information with, but if uh, we focus on where that one hour wall is, you can also see that there is uh, a storage room. Uh, that also has to have a one hour separation from the fireworks floor if there isn't a sprinkler system. Uh, and then in order to continue that one hour separation, there has to be at least a 45 minute fire ready door as well. So you could take a look at this example. It's on our website as well. But this is, uh, in a nutshell, what we ask for on uh, our floor plans. So the next video, I'll just briefly discuss the types of temporary structures that we have. But one thing that I'd like to mention just before that is uh, the NFPA 1124 does not permit the sales of consumer fireworks from a building that has uh, more than one story. And so even if the sales are limited to uh, the first floor only, if the building has two stories, it's, it's just not permitted uh, to be licensed as a consumer retail fireworks facility. So go ahead and just make a note of that um, when you're uh, scoping out maybe some buildings around the area. We did have uh, 42 facilities this year. Um, I think a couple of them were actually considered limited quantity because of having a second story. Uh, but uh, please go ahead and uh, finish up with either the temporary structure videos or the conclusion video on codes. Thank you.